Hi there, I'm Mike Mike 37 and I'm going to show you how to make a level using the Dragon Age toolset. First of all, File, New, Level. We're making an outdoor level, so we'll use Terrain. Click Next. Set the size you want. 64 by 64 is fairly small, but uh, that's fine for what I'm doing now. You might want to make a bigger level. Click Next and hit Finish. First thing you'll see is the corner of your map. So we want to move our camera to see that, so I'll talk you through the camera controls now. We'll be using middle click a lot, so if you've got a, a mouse with a thumb button, I recommend setting that to middle click. To pan around the level, drag middle click, and we can have a look around what we've got. To rotate the camera, hold down Alt and drag middle click. This spins the camera around. To zoom in and out, scroll forwards or backwards. If you find that your camera is getting a little, going a little crazy, a good tip for getting it under control is to first of all look down on your subject, and this will set where you want your um, XY focus to be. Bring the camera down and make sure your height is where you want it to be. So I'll lower it a little, and now we should be rotating around the middle of the map somewhere, which is what we want. Another good tip is if you've got props in your level, you can use them to center the camera. Just double click on a prop and your camera will focus on it and rotate around it. I'll show you how to add props later. First thing we're going to do is add a water mesh to the level. It's a good idea to get this done nice and early. Select your terrain world route, right click, insert, insert water mesh. For some reason it always seems to start way above your terrain. This results in a big black square, which you may have noticed if you chose to add a water mesh right at the beginning in the default options. So we're going to try and move that down. Click water mesh in the palette and click the three axis movement button. You can also hit the Q key on your keyboard. It's a good shortcut to remember. You'll be presented with the transform gizmo. This is something you'll be using a lot, so it's a good idea to become familiar with it. The three arrows here, red, blue and green, can be used to translate in just one axis at a time. So if I use the green one, we'll move just along this way, and we won't accidentally move in any of the other um, coordinates. We want to move it down, so I'll be using the blue arrow to bring it down in the z-coordinate, to just below floor level. If you want to translate with two um, at once, bring your mouse and hover over the square between them. This will allow you to move in two different coordinates. So our water mesh is now roughly in the middle of our level. If you find your water mesh isn't big enough, you can drag down the properties and the size X and Y are there, but for what I'm doing it's big enough. We now want to edit our terrain so that we can actually see the water mesh. Using the deform tool here, we can raise or lower terrain. You'll notice that now the terrain is below the level of the water, we can see the water quite clearly. If you're not happy with any changes you make, you can use Ctrl and Z to undo them. It's a good idea to play around with the properties of this tool, particularly the outer radius which lets you change the size of it. Just to demonstrate a little feature, I'm going to increase the inner radius percentage to 100%, which will give me a very sharp edged piece of scenery. If you're not happy with a sharp edge, you can use the Smooth tool to soften that edge and we'll create a slightly more rounded hill this way. If you want to bring a surface to become a little flatter, this is particularly useful for placing props, use the plateau tool and we'll go back to having a nice flat surface. But this does tend to leave very sharp edges if you're not careful, so we can smooth them off again. But I don't want that there at all, so I'm just going to hit undo a few times. I'm going to start deforming my terrain to get something looking roughly how I want it. So I'll have a bit of a pond surrounded by a bit of a hill and I'll be placing something like a, a building here or something. It's just a simple example. You'll obviously be wanting to spend a little more time in this. So now we have our terrain set. We probably want to paint it because at the moment it all just looks like grass which we don't really want. To do that, head to the 
texture paint tool here. This brings up a new palette with four different textures we can use. I'm going to use the dirt one just to go around the edge of the um, water so that we've not got grass growing right, right the way up to the water, which is a little unbelievable. Okay. You probably might find that these four textures won't do you what you're wanting. So to create a new texture, we can expand the palette here to see what ones we've already got, and making a new one is done by right-clicking on the palette, insert, new material. At this point, it's a good idea to have a browse of what materials are available um, on the Builder's Wiki, where you can see all of the textures available um, in a nice, easier, easier to browse format. I'm going to use a stone texture, so I'm going to name my material stone. Looking at an example we've already got here, we can see that these are using diffuse and normal textures and aren't bothering with a specular one. I'll do the same. In my stone texture, I'll now click on the diffuse property and click with the ellipsis to bring up a browser. By default, it'll show me a lot of textures. We don't really need all textures, and if you've been looking at the textures online, you may already know the name of your texture. But if you want to browse for them, a good filter is ter underscore asterisk. This will bring up all the terrain textures, which you can have a look through in your... So now I have my rock-like texture, and I can now use that to paint. One thing you may notice, particularly if you're using a uh, more heavily patterned texture, is that if the texture appears to be too large. If, th if that's the case, on your texture it itself under the palette, scroll down in the properties to UV tile. If you change this, you can see that the texture's size now changes to something a little bit more reasonable. So 4 is a good number. 4 or 8 tend to get you the sizes you might be looking for. I'm happy with 4, we'll go with that. At this point I'll add some props to make it look like we've got something of interest in the level. So to bring up props, head to the Models tab. I haven't got a lot of room here, so uh, sorry for that. Um, and browse for the prop you want. Again, you can look on the Builders Wiki for pictures of these props. Um, but it, as a quick tip, if you want outdoor buildings, um, FHE is your Ferelden exterior stuff. So we'll be using a uh, slum building or something like that. Now, of course, this is in the wrong place. Quite often they don't sit on the ground. Um, to, do, to translate it, we used our gizmo again, but this time I'm going to show you the snap options. Now, you may find that your um, prop is snapping to certain coordinates, which you may not want. If you click on the little magnet here, Change Snap Options, you can toggle on or off Enable Snap to Grid and change the grid size. I tend to leave these off. Sometimes I turn on Snap Rotation, but generally speaking for outdoor levels, you often don't want to have these um, snaps on. They're more useful for indoor stuff. So I'll bring it a little more in line with the uh, surface of the ground. Again, if you find that you've your your terrain is kind of um, leap, leaping up your building and making a bit of a mess, um, you may find that a good tool to use is the plateau tool, where you can flatten it down so that you're placing your building on something that's a little bit flatter. That prevents clipping of terrain, which you don't want. So we've now got a prop in to rotate the prop, click on the prop in the uh, browser, and you can either use the button here, um, three axis rotation, or you can hit E on your keyboard. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit just to show you rotation. Another useful tip is using copy and paste. This works just as you'd expect, and you can use Control and C and Control and V, or right click, copy, and right click on your node paste. They'll typically be pasted right on top of each other or whatever the coordinates of the original object you copied. So often you'll want to then move them away. I don't really need two buildings but it's a useful tip anyway.